everything. Here's today's outfit. Today I'm wearing the sweater that I showed you in last week's vlog from Ann Taylor Loft. It's the one that has this fox on it right here. Um, I'm wearing this today because we need to wear clothing with the mascot on it for our holiday picture. I'm wearing these jeans from Nordstrom Rack. They are page denim, something like that. Uh, but I didn't pay full price. These are booties that I got from Nordstrom a couple of years ago. And I am wearing a white top underneath, a two-tone Michael Kors watch, and my brown frames this morning. So that's it. I'll talk to you guys on my way to work. Okay, happy Monday. It's 7.20. I was hoping to leave my house a little bit sooner, but that always seems to be happening. Um, it's Monday, and what do I want to say? As far as my weekend, I had a nice weekend. I didn't go anywhere, I didn't do anything. I feel like that's the story of most of my weekends. Saturday, I just edited video. Sunday, I was in an organizing frenzy um, and spent a good portion of my day doing laundry, organizing some stuff that had become disorganized and I did some lesson planning and did some self-care stuff. So I did an Insta story yesterday where I talked about one of the things that I do for self-care because that's been all the rage and everybody's talking about self-care this, self-care Sunday and all of that. And for a while I was like annoyed because it just sounded like a cliche. But then I thought it is a good idea to, to devote one day where you do things that are really for the purpose of taking care of yourself. So for me, my Sundays, my self-care Sunday involve like a variety of things. So for one, I try and make sure that I get up and work out. And although I don't love working out, that is a form of self-care, making sure I'm healthy. Then I will typically come home and go to church online, which I know some people have issues with. Um, but I just do it because A, I'm a little lazy when it comes to like getting dressed and presentable over the weekends and B, um, it just allows me to like get the same message that I would get if I had physically gone to church, but also like take care of things around the house that I just never feel like I have time for when I actually go to church on Sundays and then come home and try and do it. That's me. I mean, I could go to church earlier than what I normally do, but I also value sleeping in a little bit on the weekends, whatever. So, <laughs> um, attending church online is one of the things but I also for the past couple weeks have been picking out my outfits for the entire week I have always picked out my outfits the day before but it's always been for just a day um, but this these past couple weeks I've been doing it for the entire week and I have liked it because when I come home from work during the week that is one less thing that I have to do so I shared that on my insta story yesterday and then also on Sundays I try and either um, have a massage or get a manicure or do like a little at home facial treatment. I did the facial treatment last night using the Foreo UFO that I showed you a couple weeks ago. Um, I try and make sure I have time to read. Um, pretty much I just try and make sure my Sunday is as least stressful as possible and that a part of it is devoted to helping me set myself up so that I have a so that I can mitigate the amount of stress that I have during the work week if that makes any sense so that's how I spent my Sunday yesterday um, I also found it interesting that a couple people in the vlogs have commented recently on just the general atmosphere of the neighborhood that I live in while I drive and I just think that's interesting because I don't think that I live in a place that's like not attractive, but I guess I've never really seen it through other people's eyes. Um, someone even asked for like a neighborhood tour, which I thought was interesting. I don't know that I'll ever do that because I don't know that I want to be so specific about where or what my neighborhood looks like, if that makes sense. But um, I want to say thank you because it made me, I'm now driving to work looking at it with a whole new vision. Um, aside from that, I have also had a couple people ask me if I was going to do Vlogmas this year. I honestly don't think that I will for a couple reasons. Like, A, uploading a video once a week is very challenging, let alone uploading every day. B, because of the shifts and dynamics and changes and transitions that my family and I have been going through over the past couple of or several weeks, 
It doesn't really feel very Christmassy in my house. I've decorated the front of my house um, and that's just so that my neighbors don't think I'm a complete Scrooge. Um, but I haven't done anything inside my house and I don't even know that I will so I feel weird doing Vlogmas if you're looking in my house and it just looks like it's any old month and not necessarily Christmas time. Um, and I just, I don't know, I think it's just going to be an interesting holiday season for my family and I and I don't, I, I don't know, it just feels like it's not going to be very Christmassy. But, um, so I don't, as of right now, I don't think I'm going to do it. I might change my mind and just say, you know, even though it's not overly Christmassy, um, it's still just like a fun experience to upload on a daily basis or interact on a daily basis as opposed to a weekly basis. So I might change my mind. You might see this tomorrow on Tuesday and, um, then again, you might not see this until this coming Sunday. So I'm not sure. I don't want to get myself involved in something that's going to cause me more stress because I feel like I'm finally getting to the place where stress levels are coming down a bit. So, but, uh, yeah, so that is pretty much it. I am just now getting to work. I really wanted to get here earlier than what I'm getting here. Um, but it is what it is. I'm here. So I will check in with you guys at some point today as far as my day to day. It's Monday, so it's a minimum day for us. The kids are going to start I Ready Math. I'm going to review the math lesson from Friday to make sure they have it. Um, make sure they understand it because we have a math quiz tomorrow. And um, I'm going to try to do the snowflake craft that looks just like the leaves you guys have probably seen in my window. The snowflake thing with my class. So that is the plan today. I will let you know how it goes. I will talk to you guys later. Hello, it is my lunch time. It's about, it's probably 12, 12 o'clock at this point. I'm in my pod, I'm warming up my lunch. That was so nicely provided to me by Jenny. She bought an Instapot over the weekend and made, I think it's like an enchilada casserole, so she brought some for me, because she knows I like Mexican food. So that was very nice of her. I'd much rather eat that than a salad. As far as today has been concerned, today has gone by pretty well. Um, they came in, we did some grammar to start. I then had them work on their iReady math test for about 20 minutes or so. And then I just reviewed the lesson from Friday to make sure they got it. So they did math rotations and I pulled one group at a time and had them do a couple of sample problems and sent them on their way. And so far it sounds like everyone's pretty much got it. So that was good. Let me put you guys down for a second. So my lunch is warmed up. Let me, let me show it to you really quick and then I'll just recap the rest of the day so far. So here is the enchilada casserole made with an Instapot. It looks like rice, beans, and chicken. I haven't tasted it yet. She also brought me some avocado, how nice, and a tortilla and then some red sauce or green sauce, depending on what I like. And I decided to try them both because I like them both. So I'm gonna take this in my room. I have still been eating lunch in my room, um, which I just am very surprised by because you know I'm a very big proponent of eating in the staff lounge to kind of get out of your space. But this year being the way that it has been, I just have preferred to be in my classroom because it gives me about 40 minutes of solitude, some peace and quiet that I need, and just kind of removes me from everybody else's stress. So I am in here. Peggy and Jenny still eat lunch in the lounge, and I did make sure to tell them not to take me eating lunch in my room personally, that it has nothing to do with them. It's just been something that has given me a little bit of peace throughout the day this school year. So that has been what I've been doing. As far as the rest of the day, um, I read them or I played Storyline online and I had them listen to a story. Let me see if I can find it. Since yesterday was the first day of Hanukkah, I played the story Hanukkah in Alaska. I took a little bit of, of a clip Ernest, of it. What did you feed him, they asked. What did he like so much? Latkes, he answered. Pretty funny in Alaska. And 
miracles can happen in a lot of different ways. That The kids really liked the story, and after that, a couple of them said, oh, I really like Storyline Online, which I do too. So um, they listened to that. We finished rotations afterwards, and then just before lunch, we started talking about the listening test that they're going to be taking. So we are starting a brand new theme in Wonders. I'm actually now on Unit 2. And you know what, this might be a good idea to kind of just let you know how I start the unit. So um, I follow pretty much the same pattern with every learning block. We always start, kick it off with the introductory video that Wonders provides, and then I read them the short passage at the very beginning of each learning block, and I have been using that as a listening test. I've had to create listening tests for that. I have not made one for every single unit and week, and I think I'm close to running out because I only got to unit three last year. And um, so I read the passage, I give them the listening test, and I assign that to them through Connect Ed. So I'll read the passage out loud. They don't have access to the passage in their book, and we'll discuss it as I'm reading it. I'll show them the questions ahead of time to kind of help them out because these tests are not the easiest. And then I will have them get their Chromebooks, listen to the story again, and then take their Chromebooks, close it, and then have them take the listening test. I do not allow them to take the test while they're listening to the story because I feel like that defeats the purpose of what of the skill that we're trying to build. So let me see if I can show you um, some of the things I'm talking about here. So I just use these videos here as the, oh no, hold on. So here we go, I have to re-log in. So I just use the video that they have here as the opener. And on a side note, did you guys know that these correspond with the days of the learning block? I never knew what these numbers were for. Um, and so if I'm on day two, it's gonna show me all the resources it thinks that you need for day two, day three, and so on. Now, of course, there's a ton of these things like I have never, ever use those things I and I probably never will but in case you didn't know that that was my little tech tip of the day so I just played this video that's included with every block they usually are about a minute long cooperation why is working together a good way to solve a problem so I show them that I let them know what the comprehension skill is for the week as well as the uh, vocabulary skill and then I read the listening test um, to them and then I give them the listening test that I have created. So these are just ones I've created. They're only four questions long, five questions at the most because the passage is, excuse me, because the passage is so short and I put them, that in as a listening grade. They are very challenging tests, but I do balance them out by giving them like um, brain pop video quizzes that I let them take while they are watching the brain pop video just to kind of get a mix of this is how they perform when they hear something once or twice and aren't able to answer the questions until after they've heard it and then this is how they perform if they're allowed to do it as they go so that's where I'm at with my day when they come back they'll do the listening test and um, we're going to start this snowflake project and then hopefully draw countries that we are going to be studying in our holidays around the world type thing. So hopefully I can share all that with you in some form or fashion. But right now I need to eat my lunch. I'm going to probably watch some, watch some YouTube while I do it. And I'll also show you my holiday decorations after, um, probably after school. So talk to you guys later. All right, guys, it is 420. I'm getting ready to leave. I am just going to wrap up the day. Um, I feel like my skin is shining. Sorry. Um, we, I had to make a change of plans. I think the last time I spoke to you at lunch, I was going to give the kids a listening test and then we were gonna do this art project. Then I really had a reality check and realized I don't have enough time after lunch because their lunch is over at 12.30, we get out at 1.15. I don't have enough time after lunch to have them pack up, pass out their homework, read this passage, have them listen to the passage, take the listening test, collect all that stuff, do the snowflake, so on and so forth. So I canceled that, the listening test, 
not only for that reason but also because there's like five or six kids that were absent today and I would like for them to take that listening test so that they have that opportunity for a grade so I postponed that to tomorrow and the only thing that we got done was the snowflakes so the snowflakes are just the same project that I did with these leaves I'll show you the finished product of the leaves if you've never really taken a moment to look at them so they are these here and I started doing these last year with Missy, my student teacher, and I ended up just liking them because they just add a little touch to the classroom. It's a quick and easy, fun project, and I, I just like it. So the thing is, is you just have to find an image on Google, which I have found, and last year they were we were hand cutting them out, so cutting the insides of the shape out. Um, and then this year, I found a friend, Patricia, who I know watches my vlogs very faithfully, has a Cricut and she was nice enough to cut the snowflakes for me on the Cricut because it's much faster and I paid her in Starbucks and thank yous. So we did snowflakes and they look like this when you make them. I got this off of Pinterest. I just looked it up when I was doing this for St. Patrick's Day. That was the first one I did. And you just cut wax paper, you need Mod Podge, you need the shape. So I chose a snowflake, they Mod Podge the piece of wax paper Paper, lay the shape down lay the tissue paper down on top of the shape and then Mod Podge some more and then you let it dry and you cut out the shape and you're done so that is all that we got done that took them right on to the end of the day and the other thing that I tried with that today is because the hard part was for some kids that project is a nightmare because they can't really handle kind of the mess that the Mod Podge can make and just the stickiness of it. And we were using paint brushes before and my paint brushes were super small. Then I was using Jenny's paint brushes and I felt bad because I wasn't cleaning them well enough um, for her. And then she suggested nicely enough that I try these little paint sponges from Home Depot. Um, so I went and got a class set of these yesterday. They cost 73 cents a piece and that's what I use. It seemed to work better. They're just in this bucket, excuse me, soaking right now. I'll have them soak overnight and then I will clean them. So that is all that we did after lunch. So when they dry, you cut them out and then you hang them up. So that was the end of the day. The other thing I wanted to show you is what I'm going to be doing, and Jenny's doing this as well as Peggy for the holidays. I found this product on Teachers Pay Teachers. It's a lap book about the holidays around the world. Let me see if the lighting gets any better. And um, there's two parts to it. So there's a lap book that you're making. Let me see if I can just show you that on my computer. I think it's this one here. Um, yeah, let me show it to you. The finished product will look like this here. There are six countries in total. And then on the back, let me see. That's a, a closer view. Each little country has a little tab, a book with tabs. But on the back, where is that image? Sorry. I don't know where it is, but on the back there's like a little place for you to put the passports to all the places that you guys studied. I think there's like 13. 15 to 20 countries in total. They can label the journey of the countries that we quote unquote visited. Um, put them there. There it is. And in the back you can put like little passports. So that's one part of it. And then it comes with this research book that you can also have your kids make. And you have um, black and white versions of each country, these fact sheets for each country or and sorry i'm just kind of going through this i'm all over the place the fact sheet and then the fact sheet has a corresponding question page um and there's one for every country that she's included in the lap book so there's black and white versions of that and then there's also these colored versions here so my plan is or what i chose to do is when i initially looked at the lap book my first kind of cause for pause was that out of all the countries that were there, they were very heavily European countries. So like France, the Netherlands, um, England, and I think that's how it was in the very beginning, but she's since updated her pro product to add um, more countries and therefore it became more diverse. So there's things on here like Diwali, Kwanzaa, 
um, Egypt is on here. So when I saw that, I was like, okay, I'll buy it. I bought this last week when it was like a Cyber Monday sale. So I bought it for about $8 and some change. And since all three of us are doing it, we're splitting the cost. And um, so I chose to do that because what I wanted to do was expose kids to the holidays around the world, but in a very non-overwhelming way and this seemed to be the best way to go about it so what i'm going to be doing for the next couple of weeks is for social studies we will read one fact sheet um, from each of the six places that we've chosen so tomorrow we're going to start things off with kwanzaa i'm going to project the color copy of this but of course the kids are going to get a black and white version and i am going to have them fill out the little question portion that comes after each of these fact sheets. I'm probably going to use some kind of Kagan structure to do that just to make it more exciting. Um, and the way that I chose the six countries, let me put you guys down, is first I was like, well, maybe I'll assign the six countries, but then I wanted to have a little bit more buy-in. So I said, it's probably best if they pick their own countries. And then I did alter the amount of European countries that were in there because it was so heavily European. So I wanted to make sure there were countries and cultures in there that we don't typically get to talk about. So I took some of them out, but left some of them in. And then I just had six kids Sorry, the lighting. I just had six kids come up, draw one country, and those were the six countries that we ended up um, choosing for our project. So we will be using, or we will be studying Japan, Australia, Brazil, Mexico, um, Kwanzaa, which is not a country, I told my kids that, Canada, and there's one more. Mexico, Australia, did I say them all? Kwanzaa, Canada, Mexico, Australia, Brazil, and Japan. So those are the six countries that we will be um, learning about. And again, I told my kids Kwanzaa is not a country. It is an African-American holiday. So it's more a cultural thing and not so much this is what they do in this particular place. Although I guess you can say this is what people do who celebrate Kwanzaa in the United States, but I'm not even sure if that's 100% correct. So we're gonna start that tomorrow, and we're gonna make the lap books, but we're gonna make them all together, one piece at a time. I made a lap book last year, and it was a little bit of a nightmare. So we're just going to fill, fill in one part at a time, and basically they read the fact sheet. Then on the page for the lap book, it looks like this. They're gonna fill in a section about the food, um, what, the celebration is, some traditions from it, and a fact. So you can see there's really only room for like one piece of information, and then in the box they're gonna color it. I have them put their name at the bottom because we're gonna save these until we're all ready to put it together. And then the finished product will be a lap book. I would like to tie in like their family's cultural traditions to this project somehow by maybe having them bring in like a food item that represents what their family celebrates or does or something like that, but I have not fully thought that through, so I'm not totally sure. So that is that. Um, as far as Vlogmas, I'm still not 100% sure what I'm gonna do. It's very possible that I'm gonna go home and edit a video and upload it, but it's also just as possible that I won't. But before I go for the day, I'm going to also show you my holiday decorations. I just decorate my area because that's all I can afford. Um, although I'm thinking about getting some lights for the window, but this is what I have going on. So just some snowflake lights. That is winter themed up there. If you look very closely, like this little box is lit up. I got that from Target and that little tree is lit up. I got that from Target last year. And I think um, it would look nice if I put wind, not windows, lights in this window here because that is where the snowflakes are gonna go. So maybe put some lights in there. And if I'm really feeling rich, buy some lights to go around the board. Cause sometimes once I get started with something, it really takes on a mind of its own. So regardless of what I do, I am gonna end the vlog here. I need to write a note and go to the post office because I'm going to be sending my secret Santa their gift today. We are doing that again. Um, I'm very excited for the person that I got. And I feel like I did a pretty good job picking some things that are a good representation of this person. So I need to head to the post office to do that.
So I'm gonna go ahead and say goodbye for now and get that done. And I'm not gonna close out the blog because I don't know if this is gonna be a Vlogmas video, but I'm gonna close out the day and I will be sure to check in with you guys tomorrow. So, have a